Hello, and welcome to the Layer 2 show. Today we're speaking to Jacobo from NAMI. NAMI is offering a Layer 2 scaling solution, and I'm very proud to have Jacobo today to explain how does NAMI stand out from the market and how does it compare with other Layer 2 scaling solutions. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Hagman. Uh, so could you introduce yourself, Jacobo, briefly? Uh, how did you come to build uh, NAMI, the scaling solutions, and how does it stand out from other uh, Layer 2 scaling solutions? Sure. So. Um... My name is Jacobo. I'm currently based in Norway, background in software engineering, been, been working in software for 25 years now, 26 maybe. Um, I set up the company 14 years ago. We were doing content aggregation. Uh, so we got sources of news from 6,000 publications, almost 6,000 publications worldwide and distributed through different, through different uh, channels serving 50 million users a day. And in 2016, we started looking at this technology called blockchain with the objective to build a content marketplace to fix some well-known problems of the content industry. But very soon into that discovery phase we got into, we realized that the scaling was an issue. So uh, in, on the 1st of January 2018, we started working on NAMI, building NAMI, which was a layer two. Um, we were pretty much the first layer two. Maybe Raiden was out a couple of months or weeks before us, but give or take along the same times. Uh, so we have been on mainnet for 36 months, only supporting payments. And uh, we have gotten quite a bit of feedback these last 36 months. And now we have deployed NAMI 2.0, which is a uh, full EVM compatible layer two, supporting generalized smart contracts. And Back to the point that you asked about, how do we differentiate from the others? You see, uh, because of our background in engineering, we understand that, uh, oh, engineering and building products for the masses, we understand that scaling is a lot more than just TPS. So what we also offer on NAMI is instant finality, no latency and predictable fees, which is a big, big, big important point, right? Especially for mass adoption. So if you wish, we can dive into, into some of the specifics in terms of how does our offering differentiate from the offering of some of the other layer twos. Of course, please, let's dive deep into that. Also very curious to ask about the recent blog post, uh, Nami comparing with Starkware. I think it's quite, uh, quite interesting. So let's dive deep, please. Sure. So, I mean, in, in simple terms, um, you can think about, about most of the layer twos are, are really uh, are born out of the out of the original plasma uh, plasma concept. Then from there, very soon evolve into what we understand today as rollups, right? And um, in simple layman terms, you can make a blockchain scale because you move the 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 processing from on chain to what we call off chain. And by all chain, by all means, what we mean is it is a, a centralized, uh, a centralized area that is going to be processing all the transactions. That is why we can offer faster TP or higher TPS than on chain themselves. So pretty much every every layer two does the same. So there is this 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 aspect of of centralization that it is of course important and can represent risks. Now, what rollups do? is um, they, the same way as we do, they, they rely on Ethereum for security. But what rollups is, are doing is um, they do periodic commits back to the base layer. So they move the transactions from the base layer down to the, sec down to the second layer. They perform a large number of transactions and then they bundle them up and then they submit them down to the base layer. That is something that we consider that is suboptimal and um, not really fixing a scaling per se. Because on one end, yes, you can provide a higher number of throughput uh, of transactions per second. But then the problem is that you're really adding extra latency and longer time to the finality of the transactions because uh, is the time is going to take you to process them plus the time that will still take the base layer to, to conclude those transactions. Now, the other the other aspect to it as well is 
that uh, roll ups, and, and we have seen that already these last few weeks with optimism a couple of times. Um, <laughs> they have realized that submitting those transactions from the second layer down to the base layer it incurs them into, into higher fees. So, and when the base layer is too, too congested, they have stopped submitting those budgets of transactions. So effectively, it's just demonstrating that rollups is a scaling protocol or a scaling solution that only works when the base layer is non-congested. And um, again, that is just not optimal at all. That is, of course, you know, still adding the, the extra finality and latency to the transactions, which is which is not ideal. So um, the way NAMI works, though, is that uh, we have borrowed some of the design patterns of the state channels. Uh, some of the team members have been working around scaling since 2013, the scaling blockchains, that is. And um, ourselves, we, we had a high availability system serving 50 million users a day. So because of the knowledge developed by particularly Mark, our COO, who has been around blockchain since 2011. So what we did, though, was uh, we we borrowed the that design pattern of state channels, which consists on you setting up a channel between you and, in our case, the operator. And then you can easily sign transactions with your wallet. The moment that transaction is signed is then being co-signed by the operator. A receipt is being published on the network, and then that transaction is going to see the final. So we don't do those periodic commits down to the base layer, which means that uh, we can offer instant, nearly instant finality and no latency. And um, equally, we can also offer predictable fees, which by all means, when it comes down to mass adoption, is, is also a must that we must have, right? So um, yeah, you can think about NAMI as a layer two where we take the processing of chain. We are non-custodial, so we don't touch your money. You deposit your 10,000 USDC coins that you would like to use on NAMI into the smart contract. Um, then the NAMI layer two will see that you have deposited that money and then you will have access to those coins on the layer two. You can perform instant and, and fast and cheap transactions by sending messages with your wallet. And then you can exit anytime you want. Okay, I see. You mentioned that the most applications were payment focused. Um, can you tell me more about what has been built on NAMI so far? Right. So that is that was for NAMI 1.0. Mm -hmm. NAMI 1.0 was only supporting payments. And um, we have got a production uh, system here in, in the North Sea in Norway, which is not DeFi, it's not NFTs. Uh, it is about um, energy and, um, and the seafood industry. So we have a solution that was deployed uh, 10 months ago now which is being used in uh, seafood barges in the North Sea. So it consists on acquiring data from IoT devices to determine if the installation is running on store power or if it's running on, on diesel power. And then we do automatic reporting to the authorities uh, to be able to determine the carbon footprint of those operations. So that is a solution that I know uh, is not DeFi, and it doesn't increase the TVL of the solution per se or the protocol, but it's something we feel very proud of. But equally important now in terms of NAMI 2.0, now that we, we have been on mainnet for, I think today is two weeks, uh, we, have a, we have a bunch of announcements that will be coming out over the next few weeks about different solutions that are being built and will be deployed on top of NAMI. And those, okay. yes, will involve DeFi and NFTs and other things, yeah. Okay, very exciting. So. Uh, you have had commercial applications and now um, NAMI 2.0 will open the doors to DeFi applications. Is That's there right. um, any programs that developers can participate? Um, I'll make sure I leave the links um, below the video. There is going to be, there is definitely going to be programs, uh, quite, a, quite an aggressive one. Uh, we understand the need of uh, onboarding developers. Uh, keep in mind that some of us has been has been around the software industry for many, many years. So we are kind of OGs of the, of the open source movement as well. 
of course, some people could claim that how is that possible given that our GitHub is not yet open. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we will be attracting developers and we have a very aggressive uh, uh, developer program coming up. We also have some grants. So at first I would definitely like to kindly ask you to include our Discord channel link on, on the YouTube video. Of course. So, uh, so we're gonna start bringing some of those developers, yeah. Of course, Discord is where the crypto and development community meets. <laughs> There you go. Yes. I mean, we don't have a very, very busy Discord just yet. We're mostly on, on Telegram, but we're moving away from Telegram to Discord now. Yeah. I see. I see. So uh, from development point of view, uh, NAMI protocol is uh, EVM compatible, I understand. Um, yes, what about interchain um, inter interoperability? Uh, are you considering other chains or are you very focused on Ethereum? I think, well, you know, uh, we are definitely open to, to move NAMI to other, pro to other chains, absolutely. We don't think that Ethereum is gonna be the only important chain in the future. Uh, we believe that there will be, you know, a dozen of them. Certainly interoperability is something that we also factor in when we design NAMI, even with NAMI 1.0, we could deploy NAMI 1.0 into any any um, EVM compatible uh, blockchain. Mm -hmm. Certainly with NAMI 2.0 is even simpler or better. And um, yeah, we're actually having discussions around interoperability indeed, yeah. But it is true that we're not gonna be doing a lot of work today on that. Um, step number one is hardening NAMI 2.0 and then start onboarding those developers and those companies deploying on top of NAMI. Uh, but step number two, yeah. Uh, I think that interoperability will be pretty high up on our list. Yeah. Uh, so let's speak a little bit about what we can build on NAMI. Uh, what do you expect the developer community to uh, suggest? What kind of solutions, projects uh, to build? So yeah, I mean, as, uh, as indicated before, we're going to be paying a lot of attention to the developer community. Um, we are right now in the process of improving our documentation, which, which is, is good enough for us, but it's not good enough for everyone. We're also working with a fair amount of projects that are being ported and built on top of NAMI. But um, we're going to have very, very soon news about that developer community and the, uh, and the incentives that we would like to put out there for them. So, you know, one of the key aspects of NAMI as well is that since, since the inception of the idea that we wanted to build layer two, we did say that what we wanted to do was to make blockchain is commercially viable, right? And that is something that we're going to be able to achieve with NAMI. So all those developers that we're targeting or we're going to be targeting, they will not only have the opportunity to build the next and cool DeFi or NFT solution, but also products that today uh, we humbly believe cannot be built on other layer twos or on other blockchains. And that is just to onboard the next 100 million or a billion users. So um, I would say let's you know let's use your channel to 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 reach out to your network and make sure that they come and join us on our on our discord and then they keep an eye on on the news coming out over the next few weeks so we can start interacting with those developers which we would love to by the way of course definitely we'll make sure that i leave the link to the discord channel and get the developers join uh, nami network uh, so let's summarize uh, so nami is um fast, uh, the latency is low, uh, you focus not only on TPS and on all fees, but also to producing a commercial viability and NAMI 2.0 will offer DeFi and NFT application solutions as well. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to add some spark about what is NAMI? No, I think that that is, I think that that is a very, very, very good summary. Um, in terms of what is NAMI? Well, we have a, a pretty good community. It's a small, but has been with us for many years. So would love to expand our community and, and, and bring more people in. Um, and yeah, we would, would very much like, like your audience to, to get that solid summary you have made about us. And, and also them to understand that uh, if they would like to build any solution on a blockchain, we are definitely the, the team that they want to talk to we would be super happy to onboard them and to help them to deploy the best possible product on top of NAMI. Great. Thank you very much, Jacobo. It was a pleasure talking to you.
Thank you, Erin. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.